Hey, guys. Hi, Bernard. I think we forgot one thing, right? Uh, which is, yeah. which version of the cluster are you currently running or which update version? That's a very good question. I, <laughs> honestly, I don't know. We, we, can, uh, we can check it, but uh, I think it's not the last one because we left, we left this step out on purpose. Mm -hmm. Usually, I, if you install uh, Azure Stack HCI, you should patch your systems before you install the cluster. Right. But we didn't do that. Why, Bernard? <laughs> well, we wanted to show you guys the update process, right? So uh, that's maybe a lame excuse, but no. Um, <laughs> no, that, no, 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 that, no. That it's, was, that it's was a good one. That was our intention, right? To show you yeah. how to update using the tools because you need to update. If you want to receive Microsoft support for your cluster in case anything goes wrong, you should have an updated system, right? Yeah. Um, and Carsten, I know that you're doing a lot of trainings for you people outside. Um, what are your insights built from yeah. a long history of <laughs> installations and playing with patches? Yeah, at, at, at least in in Germany, where I where I do my trainings most of the time, um, there are some mixed feelings about uh, patching Microsoft systems. There are a lot of people who had maybe a bad experience with one patch with uh, domain controllers or exchange or whatever and i try to convince them to um, patch the the azure stack hci cluster and storage basis direct uh, direct clusters and hyper-v clusters every month not every quarter not every half a year not every year um in my opinion you should patch it every month mm. um, don't do it in the the second week of um, of uh, the months uh, because the updates can, uh, come out at the second tuesday mm -hmm. in the month so give it a bit time to to uh, that other people can find problems with the patches and microsoft has some time to fix it there are some industries where that's not possible they have to patch immediately after a security patch is out and the security patches are also in the cumul cumul cumulative update so they maybe can't do that but usually mm. wait a bit two three weeks but patch every month uh, that's mm. that's my advice and i know there are people i had, I, I had some fun stories if we had time but um, mm. i i even heard from uh, someone called me and wanted to have have assistant while pet, by patching his s2d clusters mm -hmm. and i asked him when did you last patch he said 30 months ago so uh that's of course not what i was amazed that this cluster was still running <laughs> <laughs> but um uh, don't do that. Microsoft, okay. there are not only fixes, security mm -hmm. fixes, there are also improvements and uh, please do that. So how would, he, would, he do, would we do it? There are several ways we could do that, right? Mm -hmm. We could yeah. do it the old way, old fashioned way, uh, take one node out, um, not out of the cluster, but pause That's the okay. workload. So move the workload to another host, then install the microsoft patches by hand reboot it um, um, wait for the storage jobs to finish finish very important part move the workload on the node again and then if everything is fine go to the next mm -hmm. customer right. and that's still okay you can do mm -hmm. that by hand that's still a valid way but there are maybe better options um, mm -hmm. and microsoft uh, I don't know when it exactly was, but there is a cluster aware updating possibility. Mm -hmm. So we have an update process that is cluster aware, that knows the spe specialities of a cluster. You can't patch all cluster systems at once and reboot them. Mm -hmm. That would be bad for your workload, right? So we have some specialties in a cluster uh, compared to a single node. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and um, there are different ways. We will show you, of course, the latest and greatest, and the latest and greatest is Windows Admin Center. Maybe even better would be Azure uh, updating, but uh, we don't go so far. <laughs> we could, but we don't. We, we use Windows Admin Center. And I will also show you, while Windows Admin Center does its magic, we will also show you a classic tool where you can also watch what's happening. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yep. So first, we go into our cluster mm -hmm. here. And then we have this nice update. Mm -hmm. Under operations, we have our update. 
So there is something in the cluster that is responsible for the update of a cluster. It's a cluster aware updating role. It's a cluster role mm -hmm. that is running in the cluster. And um, to use that, Windows Admin Center always uses uh, the cluster aware updating role. We first have to install it because it's not installed. So I will just press on this button. It will maybe ask me for some credentials and then it will fail. But this is, we, sort of we show, now. Now. it's expected because we want to show you what you have to do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, um, in um, We have to give some rights here because the cluster is installing um, a computer account in the Active Directory. It's not me, the administrator, doing that. The cluster is doing that. And to do that, the cluster needs the rights to create an account. And mm -hmm. usually a cluster, an AD, uh, AD computer account, doesn't have these rights or computer account. So this will fail. Yeah? And mm -hmm. we can switch over to a domain controller. So this is for the people that are, you know, not installing or maybe in demo environments where you put everything in the computers org, right? You may not. They will not see that, right? They, yeah. you will not experience that issue. But ever if you go for a enterprise deployment, you probably see that, right? Because um, your clusters will be in a group or in an in an organizational unit, and hence you need the permissions to be set, right? Yeah. So that's what you. So. Here's okay. our cluster uh, account and yep. here's our, our nodes. And this mm. account has to have the right in this OU, OU where yes, it lives, right? Uh, where it lives to create uh, objects, to create sub accounts, sub objects. Yeah? yeah. So we yeah. go to the OU, it's called yep. Hallenberg. I have, mm -hmm. I have a OU Hallenberg and Frankfurt, and I have another one, GPU Accelerated. Mm -hmm. Maybe an extended part of this video series, we can <laughs> talk about that. Mm -hmm. Some some spoilers here. So mm -hmm. I go to security, and yep. here's not the cluster accounts. You see here, I have some other computer accounts. Mm -hmm. you, you see one of another cluster. It's a storage basis direct cluster with, 20, with Windows Server 2022. It, it has rights here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but our Azure Stack cluster is not here. So we have yep. to add, and we can just do tokl cluster. Mm -hmm. Cluster, it should find it. No, it doesn't, of course. You should need to... to use the computer object as of well. Of course, right? of course. It's a typical. Uh, Typical mm -hmm. error, I do. So, mm -hmm. and which um, permissions we need? We need read, okay, but something else like yeah. There, there are of course more specific rights. So there are mm. many rights. I mm. usually do because security is too complex for me. I'm too <laughs> old for security. That's one of my phrases. Ooh. So create yeah. all child objects and delete all child objects. And I'm sure there is a documentation mm. somewhere in the interwebs where you can exactly see which which granular rights you need. Yeah, mm -hmm. But you don't need full control. You, yeah. you need the right to create child objects, special maybe only computer child objects, but mm -hmm. uh, this will work. Mm -hmm. So now Thank usually you. this should yeah, it doesn't, it hasn't worked. So maybe there is an error here. Mm -hmm. yep. Couldn't configure cluster way update, failed to configure, and that's I timed remember. out. Timed okay. out is that it's not very specific. So this no. is why we tell yeah. you that. So if I do it now, mm -hmm. it should work. Yeah. And we will see in the uh, Active Directory, there will be a computer account with uh, mm -hmm. um, a self generated name. Mm -hmm. If you don't want that, there is a there is a way to pre-deploy it, mm -hmm. and you can do that if we are in the cluster. You have the old cluster where update interface, mm -hmm. like this one, mm -hmm. and here if we contact our cluster, it just happened automatically. Mm -hmm. Here we can configure the cluster self update options, and right. there you have a possibility that your AD team, if you are an enterprise, you have maybe an AD team and the virtualization guys don't have rights to do this stuff in the Active Directory. So they, you ask them for a pre-deployed computer account. And then here, if you deploy it with this tool, you can, you can specify 
which account is mm -hmm. to use for the cluster way update. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, we will go back to no here we were here we were mm -hmm. in VAC, right? Mm -hmm. So you see here it went well. So mm -hmm. we should have uh, successfully configured and. There was another problem with cluster resources, so we will just ignore that. Otherwise, we should we have to redo the video again, but <laughs> we just ignore it for now. So mm -hmm. you see here, yep. it it read the information from the cluster what has to be installed. But mm -hmm. before we do that, we go to the domain controller. I refresh the picture, and you see here we have mm -hmm. a brand new computer account. It's called Cow. T O Cow. Yeah. yeah. The first letters of our cluster name, mm -hmm. yeah, and then uh, there is a, a number character uh, thing uh, that it added. So if you don't mm -hmm. like that, you can do a pre-deploy and use the other tool to specify okay. which account. So this was successfully created, and the cluster we are updating is running under this account. We don't know the mm -hmm. password; it's self-generated, mm -hmm. uh, and so on. So um, let's go back here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now we see which version we have. Which mm -hmm. OS build, I think, in the US build is also the version of, of what we have installed. I think it's the March version, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. And it's it checked every node what is to install. So we go now to install, it checked already for updates. So we mm -hmm. go to install, and then comes the hardware part. So if your vendor has an addition to Windows Admin Center, at least now in 23, um, and Thomas Kren has, and other vendors like Dell, Lenovo, Data On also have an addition to Windows Admin Center where you can do mm -hmm. firmware updates, uh, driver updates for your hosts. Mm -hmm. um, now would be the part where we uh, where we start this additional Windows Admin Center plugin. It will check the host if there is the latest BIOS installed and so on. Mm -hmm. um, but we will skip that, yeah, because mm -hmm. um, experience tells that this not always works, especially not here. And this is a hard part. And Microsoft is reworking this additional part. There's something in. Uh, coming in the next version where mm. all these plugins will be done new or whatever. So I skip it here. Mm -hmm. We only want to install the Microsoft updates. But if your systems have the possibility, you also have to update regularly your BIOS, your firmware, mm -hmm. your, your drivers, your firmware of the network cards, and so on. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So we skip that. And now we go to install. and. I open this one because we will also have some feedback here. So you see mm -hmm. here now, uh, you see here, it starts, it's waiting to start. What will it do? It will uh, download all the patches at once. Mm -hmm. So main, mm -hmm. mainly in parallel because cluster where updated is dating can also be used, for example, for a 64 node Hyper-V cluster. And imagine this will take days to patch 64 systems. So um, if you would start with the first one and it will it, it would download the patches when the node is up for patching, the time goes by. So we maybe have different patches. Mm. Yeah? Or imagine the internet is not working when uh, node 16 is uh, due to patching. Mm. So it will fail. Yeah. So what Windows Admin Center downloads the patches first, mm. and then it starts to patch the host. Yeah. Okay. So it's now installing on the fourth node. Yeah. So you see that mm. here, mm. and in the background, uh, it will now um, install the patches. Mm -hmm. If we look in the cluster, everything is still fine. So mm -hmm. which was it? The fourth one, I, I yeah. guess. Oh. Number four. So it's it's still here. We have our mm -hmm. roles here. There are workloads running. We have running workloads in the moment. So uh -huh. we have a VM fleet running with 35 VMs. They are doing a mild workload. So uh, we have, let's say, let's have a look. We have 16,000 IOPS, 8K IOPS on every host. So our VMs are not idle. Mm -hmm. They're doing work, yeah. And mm -hmm. we will talk about VM fleet in a later video. Um, 
or in a separate video. So we have running workloads. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the fun of patching a cluster without VMs that are doing some work? So we, we can't <laughs> see anything. So when it is uh, when it has installed the cumulative update, it will pause the node and by pausing, moving all VMs to the other cluster nodes. So it will do live migrations of the VMs to the other nodes. Mm -hmm. And also, if we have if we have ownership of disk, we have one here. If we would own the pool, if we would be the host server, the host server is for here. So that's the management node where we manage our cluster over. It will move all the nodes to other hosts, and then it will reboot the node. It will wait until it comes up. It will check it if everything is fine, waiting for the storage jobs. Um, it will move the workload on on it again, so uh, get the workload back, and then it will go to the next cluster. Yeah? So it will do it one by one and very carefully patch your cluster. So this will take, let's say, between two and four hours. And we this video will not be two to four hours. We will um, we will see how the first node is doing, and then we will uh, we Could will uh, in, we will at the end of the video do a time time shift and see mm -hmm. uh, how, uh, how our cluster is doing. Yeah? So here installing, it's a little, bit, a little bit boring because we don't have any information here. Uh, VMs are still running, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go to the roles or go to the... I pasted yeah. a link in the uh, in the chat or in the private chat, so you could open that one um, in order to you know let's or uh, have a look you know at the uh, at the updates that are available at this point in time for HCI. Yeah. So let me open this browser again and paste the link in here. Yeah, Azure Stack HDI release information, and down here we have the different releases. And mm. for the last one, we have the version here, and it was this one, right? 16.07. Yeah. So that's, I that's the, uh, as I guessed, it's a March update. Mm -hmm. the, the ISO we downloaded had the March bits uh, included, right? Uh, and that's mm. also something new microsoft started doing that not a while ago not not long ago uh, yeah. um, normally you would have the only one release from the the first one from the 22h2 and then you would do the updates but now yeah. they they how you call that they they include the latest patches sometimes in the iso so yeah. that you don't have uh yeah don't have the um... old one and, yeah, oh, and this... here you see. Here you see. Yeah. We will talk about the maintenance mode also because mm -hmm. this part I really don't like. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see what is what is he doing. Let's go. Oh, the node is already gone. So if I do here a get physical disk. By the way, that's good. Yeah, you see my 24 disks. Some of mm -hmm. them are in maintenance mode. Six. Mm -hmm. These six are the this of the node and they mm -hmm. should also be not only in maintenance mode they should also be lost communication but we don't mm -hmm. see that in the moment so the cluster the node is still kind of there mm -hmm. yeah All right you see here our roles are already moved yeah so we, we don't have anything of the no, from from the VMs that are running there, they are running all over the place on the other nodes, and I think our node is now down. So let's look here again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, you see lost communication. Mm -hmm. When the node comes up again, it will also patch a bit when it starts, so that we can that we only can see in the uh, BMC, so the remote mm -hmm. connection yep. to the BMC, but we don't have it open. Um, and when it comes again, the lost communication goes away. They are still in maintenance mode, and then um, it will pull them out of the maintenance mode uh, and uh, then move the workloads on it. So it, mm -hmm. it, if it unpause a node, the maintenance mode will also be stopped. What does the maintenance mode mean? If you if you set the the disks in maintenance mode, from now on, no I/O is in going into the uh, mm -hmm. the devices anymore. Mm 
And mm -hmm. this is important if you do a firmware update of, of your NVMEs or SSDs or HDDs, you shouldn't use them, but they have to be powered on and they have to be, you have to reach them over, over um, the SAS controller or mm -hmm. NV, the NVMe, uh, the PCI bus. Uh, so they have to be running your, uh, to do the update. So usually if they are running, they are used. For that, maintenance mode is good. But mm. now Microsoft with Azure Stack HCI, always when you pause a node, the disks go into maintenance mode. And I have seen customer installations where they pause a node, they were not patching, and the node was paused for three months. Mm. Oh so my imagine God. now, <laughs> no update on the disk for three months. Uh, every every extent is uh, dirty and has to rebuild. So mm. sometimes people forget the maintenance mode. Or imagine our cluster where update has a problem and will not uh, take the node out of the maintenance mode. Mm. And you don't know that it's there. So um, I don't like that. I already... Uh, um, I already told some Microsoft people about it, um, but that's that's the way Microsoft is doing now patches. So I show it to you because it's important that mm -hmm. you know it. So the node is back, yeah, it's mm -hmm. but they are still in maintenance mode. When I connect to the node, we will try that. I don't know if if we can already RDP into it. Yeah, there it mm -hmm. is. Okay, the node is already there again. It's still paused. So no mm -hmm. roles on it, uh, and cluster we are updating will unpause it. Uh, it's still mm -hmm. the, the patch engine still thinks it, it takes its time on purpose. So it 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 takes the time. It waits. So now we'll it will show you something else. We have now still our maintenance mode, yes, and we have now storage jobs. Mm -hmm. Get storage job, and you see here all of our six volumes virtual disks um has have to be repaired because there were all the disks of one fault domain were were not available they were lost communication they were in maintenance mode they, so if the vms and the vms are running they are doing io and if they write something to the disks to the storage system there is sometimes also an extent on a device that is that can't be reached that is in mm -hmm. maintenance mode or is in is not available because the, the node is restarting so there will be um there will be data that has to be repaired afterwards and fortunately azure stack hci has a has a, a sub extend repair mode so it's much much faster than in storage basis direct at least storage basis direct 2016 or 2019 uh, storage basis direct with windows server 2022 uh, has also the uh, sub extend repair so it's equally fast yeah so here now the storage repair jobs are running you see that here yeah mm -hmm. so they they will repair and here we have roughly half a terabyte is to repair on this volume here it's 380 gigabytes they are fast we have workload running so our um our 140 vms are doing io so still happening the repairs jobs are faster than the workload and uh, if our repair jobs would would impact our VM workloads too much. You rem remember maybe we could change the repair, how fast the repairs are. You, we can mm -hmm. do them faster or slower in the moment they are at medium. Yeah? So we have options there. So the disks are there again. You see mm -hmm. our repair jobs are still working. And if these are finished, mm -hmm. then cow, he said success. He will now install the patches on the next one, but it will only put the host in maintenance mode if the repair jobs are done or if all mm -hmm. virtual disks are healthy again. So mm -hmm. if we go back here and we we look, we still have storage jobs. It's not storage <laughs> Joe. Uh, but if we look at our virtual disks that are our vol volumes, some are okay again because they are repaired, but some are still in service. So there is data not complete there. And if we look at Windows Admin Center, let's just look at Windows Admin Center uh, mm -hmm. to the volumes. 
we should have some information on some volumes here needs needs repair but still green huh? yeah. important yeah. because this is completely normal if you reboot a system it can't write to the to the extent in this system so that there has to be repair jobs the the volumes are not complete there are two or three copies yes so completely fine but one copy is missing in something so here we see there is something to be done and um in the past this was yellow or red and people freaked out yeah our volumes are defect my data <laughs> is nearly gone and now it's green but it stated it needs repair and there are repair processes running and maybe mm. we also see uh, here we see uh, uh, don't worry somewhere in here everything is fine this is normal don't panic and so on Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, let's go back to our update in Windows Admin Center. It should recognize it. We see one node is already finished. So it took mm -hmm. maybe, how long are we filming now? 29 minutes. So it took maybe 20 minutes. So mm -hmm. if we, if we, uh, if we think how much it would take, maybe four times 20 minutes, we will not wait 80 minutes until it is finished. But you see here, he's checking for updates on this host, but still, you see here, it's still doing something. Yeah. Okay. So the plan would be to, um, would, uh, for the video, I mean, we um, leave it here, I think, and. Um, Come back when it's done. Come back when it's when it's done. Yes. So, um, Bernard, um, the cluster is done uh, and much faster than we an anticipated. Mm -hmm. So we see here the OS build. Uh, I did a reload of this um, this, of this view. Page. Uh, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. this page. So we see here it's still the old one, but I when I do a reload, it should also state seventeen. Zero uh, two six, I guess. I forgot it's late in Germany already. <laughs> After five on Friday. <laughs> yeah, no worries. So um, okay, um, yeah, let's let's wait for that. So that's that's a cool thing. Um, yeah, and 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 it worked. It we had uh, uh, in the during the process there was a glitch with the old uh, interface. Um, mm -hmm. So we lost yeah. somehow the communication. I I I I haven't seen that. Um, to mm -hmm. be honest, but of course, if you show something more, more mm -hmm. when more uh, tend to go wrong than, <laughs> than if you don't show it other people. So yeah. just wait here, and we can we can look at our cluster. Mm -hmm. We have still all VMs running, and they are running there where they were before. So it mm -hmm. moved the VMs back to the original hosts. We have still mm -hmm. our one hundred. Uh, 60 VMs running, okay. maybe. So you see here, my mm -hmm. they are all gone because they were rebooted. So if mm -hmm. I go to the first one, uh, we will see uh, just a login to sconfig, no additional mm -hmm. PowerShell where we have a watch cluster running and so on. Mm -hmm. So, um, but just to do it, um, Watch fleet was it? Watch fleet cluster, yes. just to show mm -hmm. that the VMs are still working. Mm -hmm. They were not stopped. Yeah, you see, yep. we're still yeah, IO are. here. Yeah, yep. still doing the 16,000 IOP. So going back here, mm -hmm. last, ah, so it's, it's now done. Mm -hmm. yeah, we and have to check for hardware. Yeah. But you maybe have it in the history, right? So if you uh, click on the, on the uh, on the history in that view, yep. you would see the last run, right? Okay. Yes, you would see it here. He says it's up to date, mm. it's quality updates, everything is right. fine. Here we see the history, what he has done. Yeah, it's okay. overall cool. it's a nice interface. Everything succeeded, and our mm. our cluster is now on the latest bits. So Bernard, let's conclude this video. Yep. See you.